Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I want to talk about the upcoming full moon, which is happening on the 21st of July, so Saturday this weekend. And it in the UK is going to be full and exact, um, exactly full at 11 17 a.m. So that's in the UK if that's where you are based. So check um sort of the time zones for where you are. And um, you know, this is it feels like the culmination of what is set to be a fairly dramatic and intensely um intensely supercharged week energetically. Um so because and I say that because as I record this, we are in the Mars. Uranus conjunction, which is also conjunct Algol, the fixed star in the Perseus constellation. So the energy is already very heightened. And as we move through this week, we're likely to feel the effects of that um, conjunction and the energy that is kind of being brought to the surface through that. Um, and then we reach um, the end of the week with this full moon. So this full moon is special for a number of reasons. And what I do with my videos is I'm a galactic and an intuitive astrologer. So I pull out some of the key themes that we are working with, some of the key energy signatures. Obviously, I can't go through every single aspect in the chart. So I will just pull out the ones that seem to me to be the most significant and give you an interpretation of how I am um, sort of tuning in to the energies. So um, what I love with astrology is that there is no one size fits all. There is no defined um, interpretation or meaning for each of the different planets and the energies and the houses and the aspects. So it is all very much open to interpretation. So hopefully I will bring something new um, to the table in this video. Um, and yeah, I just want to say if you are new here, here, welcome. It's really, um, really nice to sort of have new people joining and subscribing on a regular basis. If you are sort of returning and you watch, um, you know, you support and watch my videos already, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, you know, I love reading the comments. Um, and quite often, you know, some of you email me as well to share what's going on. So, you know, I'm always really, really pleased to hear from you, especially, you know, anybody who shares this interest and passion of mine. Um, yeah, it's nice to connect with light minds, like minds. So this full moon is significant because it is the second full moon in the sign of Capricorn in a row. So we had the previous full moon, which was last month, was at one degree of Capricorn. And now the moon um, has done the full rotation of the zodiac and it is coming back to a full lunation in um, Capricorn again, but this time it is at the end of the sign. So this um, full moon is taking place at 29 degrees, eight minutes of Capricorn. The sun will be in exact opposition at 29 degrees, eight minutes of Cancer. So already, you know, we've got something special here because we have got an extra dose of the Capricorn energy. We also have the significance of the 29 degree point, which I speak about fairly often. It all stands out to me because this degree point um, is what we describe as the anoretic degree or the crisis degree. So when we're working with the 29 degree, we are very much at the end of the sign. So if, um, you know, we've worked with that energy, we've got a hold on it, we've got a handle on it, you know, we are really sort of familiar and comfortable and confident, then this degree point really represents the mastery of that energy. You know, we have got as far as we can go, we are masters and we've got it all sussed. But if there's any sort of parts um, of the work that we've been doing with that particular sign within that transit, if there's any sort of thing that has been left um, incomplete, it can often trigger some sort of chaos or crisis because there is a rush to complete the work that has been set to do within that sign and within that transit. So, you know, it can play out in either way. Um, but certainly when I'm looking at a chart and I see that 29 degree point, I 
always drawn to it. And what is even more significant is that the sun and the moon are not the only planets at 29 degrees um, of their respective signs in this chart. We also have Neptune, which is still at 29 degrees of Pisces, of course, being at the very um, final degree of the entire zodiac. So we're working with the full moon um, with endings, with completion, with releasing, with letting go. Um, there's often a sense of finality um, but certainly when we add in these extra sort of layer of the 29 degree anoretic point times three, you know, this is even more about closure. We are really saying goodbye to something. And because the moon is in an earth sign, this is something that feels very real, very tangible. Um, it is, you know, and it's affecting our real life, our day to day reality. So, um, you know, something real is ending and we are saying goodbye to that. Now, I talked about Capricorn energy and what Capricorn represents um, quite extensively in my last full moon video. Um, but just to kind of recap really quickly, you know, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. You know, this is the 10th sign of the zodiac. So if we're looking at a wheel where we start um, in the first house with Aries, by the time you get to Capricorn, you're right at the top of the wheel, at the top of the chart. So for me, you know, this is about um, reaching up to something, aspiring to something, perhaps. It is also, um, you know, represented by the goat, the mountain goat, the sea goat, depending on. Um, how you sort of work with this energy. So there is a sense of having to climb. Um, we're at the end of Capricorn, so we're almost at the summit now, um, you know, but it still can be hard even when you are quite high up that mountain, quite high up and into that climb and that journey. It can still be hard to see where you're going to see. You can't see the top until you get there really is the, um, the message that I kind of feel is important. So um, but with the goat, you know, there is tenacity, there is pers perseverance, there is resilience and the, this just kind of constant um, kind of dedication, tirelessness to just keep going and to have faith that, you know, what um, you're trying to get to at the top will be worth the work. It will be worth all the stamina that you have required and needed to sort of put in place to keep on going. So a real strength and um, strong sense of faith here. Um, as we are working with the top of the chart, um, you know, this also to me feels like the bridge between heaven and earth. So Capricorn being quite earthly in earth, obviously, and um, very much the 3D domain and reality and realm and um, reaching up beyond outside of ourselves and bringing that higher um, wisdom, that higher energy, that higher self consciousness and understanding in, down, into the body, into the earth to be fully embodied so that we can create this bridge between heaven and earth. Because, you know, we are not, um, the, the Capricorn often for me represents the ascension journey. So this is not about us sort of leaving our bodies and going off into another dimension. This is about bringing that higher sort of dimension, energy, understanding way of being into our own world, into our human lives and our human experience. So creating that bridge, um, which, you know, it's like, are, are you ready to cross that bridge? Because it feels like we are there. It is a case of, are you willing to step onto that bridge, to step over, to connect with what is on the other side and to bring it back, to bring it into the body, to bring it into the human reality into our world so that we can really sort of make that um, leap between the 3D and the 5D, which is what we are doing when we talk about ascension. So Capricorn is also about structures, hierarchies, institutions and um, settings, sort of systems, all that we might associate with the old way, with the patriarchal system, which is very sort of top down, Capricorn at the top of the chart, looking down, everybody has to do, you know, what we're told, we don't really have a say, and um, it's all very rules, regulations, um, and, you know, it can be quite limiting because obviously Saturn can be quite restrictive when it, um, you know, we're working with strong Saturn. So, 
you know, this is very much for me um, a time where we are really starting to say goodbye to a lot of what we have relied on in terms of the systems and the institutions and the structures in our world. But it is because they are no longer compatible. They We don't resonate with them anymore. They're not being put there for our greatest good they're not serving us um you know it is like the the elite at the top don't have the interests of the wider public the wider sort of humanitarian approach that we are moving towards as we step further into the Aquarian age as we step into 5d consciousness and way of being so you know this is very much a time of endings and we, I feel that we're going to see the collapse of this really start to speed up now as we move through the rest of this year. Now Saturn is of course the ruling planet of this lunation. Saturn is in Pisces and again we've talked extensively about Saturn in Pisces but it's interesting in this chart that Saturn isn't actually um, in aspect to anything. So it is although it is the ruling planet um, Saturn doesn't actually feel very strong in this chart and in Pisces in this water sign where you know Saturn is having to let go of the boundaries of the structures of what has maybe contained the energy up to now and um, it almost feels like Saturn is out at sea and um you know, so this isn't a particularly strong or confident position for Saturn to be in. Saturn is having to change his ways, which again sort of really ties in with the ending of the patriarchal system that we are experiencing in real time now. Um, so Saturn to me feels like he is in a void, which again is very much what we are going to feel like as we move through this times because it is hard to really see where we are going. We have to have that faith with the Capricorn energy just to keep on going and to have that commitment and that perseverance just to keep on going because we really are so close now. So just looking at what else is going on in the chart, Uranus is incredibly active at this full moon. Uranus is now at 26 degrees of, of Taurus. So this is the third deacon of Taurus. So this is very much working with the more spiritual aspects of Uranus. Um, so but still in Earth. So again, you know, it really aligns really beautifully with what I was describing with this kind of bridge between the 3D and the 5D Earth and Heaven, Earth and Spirit. Um, Taurus, I'm sorry, Uranus in the very final degrees of Taurus is now really helping us to bring down that higher mind, that higher consciousness into the Earth to ground it in. And yes, it is quite unstable this is not somewhere that we've been before necessarily you know not all of us are real masters at this this is kind of something very new something very exciting but it's also something that we just have this inner knowing this inner faith that this is part of the process and but when uranus is active at any time of um you know whether it's a full moon or whether it's in conjunction with another planet Uranus is destabilizing. This is really sort of rocking the boat, um, cracking things wide open, causing chaos and disorder in order that order can be um, brought into play. So often, you know, we hear the phrase, there is order in the disorder. And um, this is very much what is going on here. And um, so, this Uranus is in a trine to the moon and to Pluto. I'll talk about Pluto in a second. So very active. Uranus is also in a square to Mercury. So um, Mercury being in Leo, again, towards the final degrees of Leo um, during this transit. So whenever we have a square, there is um, a little bit of a um, challenge, perhaps a little bit of a bump, um, bits of tension. But um, it feels to me that whatever is being sort of um, revealed at the time of this new moon, of this full moon, and I'll talk about Pluto again in a second, whatever is coming up 
to the surface with this full moon, um, Uranus is sort of um, breaking it up, scattering it around, if you like, and Mercury is going to want to talk about it, want to know all the facts, want to have all the information. And Mercury in Leo is not going to be quiet, is not going to sit still um, and hide away because Leo wants to be seen. Leo wants to even sometimes there's kind of be a boastful energy with Leo in its sort of lower expression. But again, you know, Leo is the ruling planet sign of the sun. So this is about shining really bright, standing up, sort of telling the world what is going on. So again, that feels as if this is going to be part of this full moon. And we also have um, Uranus is sextile Neptune. So again, you know, there might be some more spiritual and um, more psychic impressions coming through again to help with this awakening process that Uranus is so intent on doing and also sextile the sun. So the sun again is lending its light, its power, its life force to the situation just to give Uranus a real boost. Um, we also have Pluto is right next to the moon. So Pluto, this is an out of sign conjunction, but it is really powerful because Pluto is in retrograde motion, heading back towards Capricorn, isn't going to hit that 29 degrees of Capricorn until early September. But this is almost like, you know, Pluto is very familiar with the 29 degree point of Capricorn. So, you know, this is not strange land for, for Pluto and Pluto has got to go back one final time to complete the work that he needs to do as he moves out of Capricorn for good or for the next 240 odd years. And um, but again, you know, Pluto is very much about digging deep, revealing what has been hidden. And in, in this case, you know, Pluto is working for the people because he is still in Aquarius, but he is lending support to the moon. And of course, the sun is shining light on the moon. So this is very much, um, you know, what is it that we need to see and understand as the people about what the patriarchal system and all these institutions have perhaps been doing. So again, you know, this is stuff that we have been building up to for some time. It feels like it's been drip, 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 but it also feels that with this full moon, you know, things are about to really open up and really start moving. Now, what else can I say about these um, incredible aspects of this full moon? The moon and Pluto are in a trine to Mars and Sedna, who are both at one degree of Gemini. So again, you know, moon out of sign trine, but close enough for it to be really influential. Pluto at one degree of Aquarius. Mars is really adding some sort of quite strong um, fire to, to this to this lunation and um, Mars wants to know all the information as well because he is now in Gemini but it is like you know adding some real oomph potentially some aggression you know there may be some anger but there is definitely some fuel there is a lot of passion being sp um, sparked here and we've talked at length about Sedna as well Sedna is diving deep into the depths of the ocean to into the depths of our subconscious unfreezing what has been locked and held there so it can come up to the surface so again you know lend the energies to the overall picture. Now the sun is in cancer so the sun really wants to kind of find a safe space to hide away almost you know cancer is the crab, cancer is very much about protection, about being at home within the self, about connecting to the inner self, to your inner emotions and um, nurturing self-care, that mother energy that we all so desperately crave. So again, you know, that is what cancer, the sun really wants to do. But the sun is in this trine to Neptune, which again is being supported by having access to visions, to imagination, to creativity, to compassion, to almost blending with all that is sort of so again, stepping out of the more sort of 3D mundane human reality to in to really imagine and start to bring in, you know, what things can look like if we start to have a different approach and a different way and a different um, vision. And of course, because Neptune is in Pisces, you know, this is very much about imagining and envisaging something new.
We have um, Chiron in Aries is very close to Eris and Eris is actually stationing retrograde at the same on the same day as this full moon. So again, you know, this is giving Eris a lot of power and Eris is very much an energy of shouting out, of being seen, of standing up for anybody who has been marginalised or treated unfairly um, and Eris really is the female version of Mars. She is a warrior. She is not going to lie down and take it anymore. And right next to Chiron in Aries, you know, in this sign of the warrior of, um, you know, potentially quite angry, quite frustrated. But this is like, we're not rolling back and taking this anymore is kind of what it feels like. And as we do that, and as we start to stand up for ourselves and to, you know, to speak out, um, with the trine to Mercury and Leo, which Mercury and Leo is helping us to do that, giving that sort of that power and that um, that oomph to really stand up and say, right, no, enough is enough. It is going to be very, very healing with Chiron there as well. So, you know, this is very plutonic. This is very catalytic. This is a real sort of spark. And, um, you know, the fires have been lit and, you know, it's going to be quite hard to put them out, I feel, at this time. Um, there there is a lot more to say about um, Venus is trying the North Node and um, Jupiter is sextile Venus. So again, Venus is quite strong in this um, in in this chart. But just before I go on to the galactic alignments, we have two kite formations in this chart as well, which is when we have a grand trine with a T square on top. So, you know, again, two kite formations is a big deal and um, kites really help us to fly higher to see the bigger picture to really let go of perhaps what is holding us down um obviously you know with the kite you have to have someone who knows how to fly a kite so again you know there is that sort of element there you know we, we might need a little helping hand from perhaps others who have done this before but this is going to come in when I start looking at the galactic chart so um yeah it's to say it's a full-on energetic um exciting and powerful full moon is an understatement and um, but let's look at the galactic alignments as well so the moon and pluto are conjunct aladfar in the lyra constellation and altair in the aquila constellation and i have talked about these two stars again at length because of pluto moving into zero degrees of aquarius one two degrees of aquarius is activating these stars but today i'm sorry at this full moon the moon is here to lend its energy as well so altair is the eagle again there's that image of sort of flying high, of being able to see the bigger picture, very much bringing in courage, which may be needed at this time, um, but also a real sense of sovereignty. And if we think about, you know, the symbolism of the eagle as well, it's a very powerful, strong creature, you know, not going to take any nonsense and is really helping us to move through these turbulent times. And Alad Far very much linked to our galactic human history in terms of Lara being the first or one of the first star systems for human life to be seeded and to be created, um, bringing in some themes of music and sound to help us heal and um, also helping us to remember our human history and that we are so much more than the earthly beings that we sort of connect with at this time. There is also a trine to the Pleiades and of course Mars and Sedna are both conjunct the Pleiades. So this is what I sort of was referring to when I talked about we have got some guidance from other beings, from other star systems, helping us, holding our hand, shining a light, guiding the way, sort of, you know, because they have got extra expertise they have done this before and they are here very much to help us as our galactic cousins and our galactic um, relatives and our ancestors and um, there is also a square with the moon and pluto to andromedan m31 galaxy and the shapley attractor so these are sort of energies that are taking us way beyond the 3d way beyond what we are used to working with on earth in this earthly realm so again you know these are acting like black holes um energy portals 
The Chapley is very much linked to the truth and masks falling, the veils dropping, everything dissolving away. The M31 galaxy, again, you know, is going to take us way beyond what we have known before. And it is with this square energy, it's sort of challenging in a way. It's, you know, are we ready for the next step? Are we ready to take that leap? Are we ready to let go of everything that we thought we knew um, in order to be able to move forward and evolve? Now, the sun, this is really beautiful, is conjunct Monoceros, which is the unicorn star or one of the stars in the Monoceros constellation. So really beautiful, beautiful um, unicorn energy coming through here. Very mystical, very magical, making us think of the colours of the rainbow, of light codes, higher frequencies. Um, you know, very dreamy, very magical. And, you know, I talked about the sun wanting to almost crawl into a cave and to hide. Again, you know, this is very much about escaping from reality because the world outside is so harsh and so hard to deal with. And again, the trine with Neptune to Monoceros is also about that too. It is, we are going to potentially want to escape, um, you know, and perhaps being able to visualise and focus on, our imagination and what we would like to see is going to really help us at this time. But Monoceros really brings in the theme of unity, which again, we get through Neptune and Pisces, bringing all the colours of the rainbow together to create this beautiful sort of new way of living and um, real beautiful hope for the future, good fortune. Um, also symbolic of awakening and integrating everything in together. It's a symbol of higher consciousness and also a reminder to be, you know, your unique self. It's about having the ability to open your heart because it is this heart consciousness and coming into the heart that is going to really help th move through these quite challenging times that we are in. So we also have the sun in trine to Alpha Centauri, um, which also happens to be opposing Mars. So the energy of this star, which is very much aligned to and connected with the Blu-ray frequency, is um, helping us to really connect to a more spiritual way of being, to start to value and um, recognize the importance of crystals of hidden information that is coming to light that is rising to the surface that is going to help us really um, evolve spiritually and help us to heal ourselves to heal the wounds that we carry and this star is also about helping us to see and connect to the inner light and the inner power that we all have within us which in many cases has either been hidden intentionally or not or or repressed or overpowered due to either fear of ourselves of how powerful we can be or fear from external parties and bodies and uh, energy signatures so this is also about helping us to liberate ourselves from codependent relationships that are simply not serving us which of course is what the south node in libra is working with us all this year to do and to also really have this really beautiful protective energy as well that again you know is just guiding us helping us to see and realize and recognize our own potential and our power and the life force that we carry within us. But Uranus is conjunct Algol and I have shared my thoughts about this fixed star um, but as well as this conjunction it is also still in opposition to Hadar in, in, in Centaurus, so Beta Centauri Hadar and this is very much um, through the opposition it is as if the Hadarian energy signature is guiding us, standing at a distance perhaps, but almost projecting the energies and the values of the Hadarian way onto us so that we can start to lift, <coughs> lift ourselves up out of where we might have become stuck. So this is very much living in unconditional love, 
in collaboration, working for the good of all, working in peace, working in with a deep connection to nature, to the land, to Mother Earth and to the animals and to all the living beings. So again, you know, this is energy that is very much part of our future experience, but we can reach out and bring it into us and earth it down if we are willing to take that step. And there's also a building square to Alphard in the Hydra constellation, which um, again is very much linked to serpent energy, to Kundalini, to um, releasing um, trapped energy that is going to help us again rise up and achieve a much higher, more enlightened perspective and way of being. And I am going to be doing a video about that energy in the very near future. So keep an eye out for that because this square, which is really forcing growth, is acting as a catalyst to awaken to the potential that we all hold within us and this amazing Kundalini creative spiritual energy that is perhaps untapped in so many of us. I feel that, you know, we are going to be working with some very powerful spiritual awakenings over the next year as this square comes into exactitude. So I've already talked about the Pleiades. Mercury is actually conjunct Alphard, so this is even more strengthened at this time. And Mercury is also working in a square with Algol and Hadar as it is squaring Uranus. So again, these energies are coming through to influence our understanding, our mindset and the information that we have access to. And with the trine to the galactic center, again, it's just this sort of sense that there is this higher consciousness, this higher frequency, this divine source understanding and wisdom that is really flooding in again for anybody who is willing to connect to it and to you listen but just to finish off quickly the north node is conjunct alpha reticulum so this is very much um a star that links us to our future selves and the future potential and you know how at recognizing that as part of our evolution we are going to have to make changes and be quite creative think outside the box and perhaps, you know, work with technology in a very benevolent way, in a very positive, supportive way to help us evolve. And that, you know, with the star system, we have this support from this, um, you know, evolved species the of hybrids who are working with us to help us grow and help us move forward. And finally, Saturn. So the ruling planet of this lunation is in a square to Regal in the Orion system, which I've talked about in previous videos, and Nihal, which is in the Lepus system. So this is Blu-ray energy again. So, you know, it is very much about recognising where we may have become victim to mind control, to manipulation, to sort of seeing what or believing what we see or believing what we're told without questioning and again you know this is very much linked to the karma that we're all working through from the orion and um, wars and the orion star system which again i have talked about in previous videos so you know this is really helping us to let go of that now to work through it. Saturn is in Pisces. Saturn is, you know, about karma, but endings, releasing, letting go. And with the support of this full moon, it feels very relevant and very apt that this is something we're working on at this time. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, and I hope, you know, you found that interesting, that you resonate with some of the information coming through. And um, this is a powerful event going to create some really big shift so as i always say having that higher perspective that higher understanding connecting in to sort of who you are at a core level having discernment about what you are reading what you're seeing what you're being told is really critical at this time because we genuinely cannot believe everything that we are being shown and um, so feel into that you know truth has a signature it has a frequency and while it's very easy to be deceived through the eyes and the ears, if you're actually feeling into something, it's very difficult to deceive when you are feeling that and connecting at, at, at your heart level, at a level of heart consciousness. So bear that in mind, you know, if you feel like 
things seem to be going while is it actually real is kind of the message and the other thing that is coming through really strongly is you know this um idea with capricorn building that bridge walking that bridge across to you know a higher realm a higher way of being um a higher consciousness and connecting more with our higher selves this is not about walking over the bridge and sort of coming out the other side and leaving this earthly realm you know this is about the ascension process for us at this stage in our evolution is about bringing that higher consciousness down into the body so it is not a time for us to be escaping to wanting to be sort of go back to the stars to go back home it is about bringing that star energy and that energy of home that we resonate so strongly with and that we miss so dramatically and so poignantly it is about bringing that into the physical and earthening earthing it down into our bodies and then through into the earth because that is how we facilitate the change and the shift so i read very recently a post by amanda ellis where she was talking about how to rise up and to rise further and higher we need to have a really strong secure base and connection and foundation so this is about I've been saying it all year, you know, this is number eight year. This is very much bringing the energy of above, below, merging it, integrating it, bringing it into um, the frequency of one. So we have this combined spiritual, earthly energy, bringing it, merging it together. We can't do that if we're not grounded and fully embodied. So again, find ways to get connected to be earth to ground and to really you know lock in because this is a time where we really need to be in our bodies because that is how we find our way home so thank you so much for watching i'm louise at spiral bright insight you can find my website and all about my work and the readings i offer at spiralbright.co.uk i have a mailing list a newsletter that i send out on a monthly basis so if this is your kind of interest um you know please feel free to sign up for that via my website like the video please comment if you found it useful subscribe if you're not already subscribed and keep an eye out because i do have a lot more content coming very soon so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon